Welcome everyone. Last week I hit 5000 subscribers. By now we are even at 6k. Thank you so much. I told you to ask questions for a Q&A, which I will be answering in this video, so stay tuned. Welcome again. Yes, I unleashed my inner Edwardian today because of some photos I just did outside. Um, I also made myself comfortable with my uh, cheap ass globe bar and some not that cheap whiskey. So, cheers. Okay, well, uh, you asked a lot of questions. Some of you asked about my education, job and work life. Well, I studied computer science in Aachen, in West Germany, um, and got a diploma comparable to a Master of Science, and then I worked for a couple of years as an IT consultant, um, including a lot of traveling, which I didn't want to do anymore at some point, so I got the job I'm doing right now, which is called IT Business Analyst. I work a lot with uh, data, it's a desk job, and I'm wearing a suit to work every day. Well, not every day. I'm taking Casual Fridays very seriously. I got two questions about my taste in music. One general one and uh, one very specific one asking about mercenary or those ones loyal. Well, I do listen to uh, death metal and grindcore. Yes, you might have might not have thought about that, but um, I'm into the extreme metal stuff. I do listen to other music, but like the extreme metal stuff is my um, my favorite kind, my favorite genre. Uh, the question whether I would prefer Mercenary or those ones Loyal probably aims for the two Bolt Thrower albums, and I had to have to go with Mercenary because. No guts, no glory. Will I do more sewing tutorials, including one for detachable collars? Yes, I will, definitely. There will be a lot more sewing tutorials on this channel um, because I'm releasing a book together with my tailor friend Sebastian Hofs and we will probably do uh, a few of those tutorials um, in form of a video. Do I own actual vintage pieces? Yes, I do, but my suits are either just styled in a vintage manner or they are bespoke suits made just for me from a 1920 cut. I don't own true vintage uh, suits. What I do own are true vintage coats and a lot of like accessories because um, it's quite difficult for me to find something in Germany um, which is true vintage and also fits me um, in an acceptable way. Uh, thanks for your kind words, by the way. Um, a deeper question was how I got into classic menswear and vintage menswear. And this is quite a long story, but I will try to keep it short so I can tell you the long version in another video. The short version is I'm um, doing live action roleplay, LARP, since I'm uh, 15 years old, which got me into sewing, because back then you couldn't go to a shop and buy all those LARP stuff, so you had to uh, sew the things yourself. Um, and LARP in turn got me into historical research. Um, I reconstructed, for example, the Skjöldehan fund from Norway, from the um, well, early to high Middle Ages, and I got a Central European Knight's Armor in the basement I put together myself, but that's even another story. Then I started my studies in Aachen and became a member of a student fraternity. And the German fraternities are uh, a lot more like conservative and traditional than the uh, US ones, I'd say. So I learned, for example, academic fencing and uh, other stuff. And I was supposed to wear a suit to all the official occasions. Um, and combined with, you know, my historical research background, uh, sewing and so on, 
I thought like if I have to do this I should do it right and then I started to um, look into vintage menswear, classic menswear and so on. Yes, um, now a lot of you asked me where I buy my stuff or where you can get specific items. This is also the most common reason for messages on Instagram. I can't do all the research for you. I'm sorry, but I have put together a list of brands and shops I like to go to. Um, you will find a link in the video description. Furthermore, I recommend using thrift shops, and flea markets and eBay. But again, you will have to do this yourself. Sorry. Is it possible to dress well without much money? Yes, of course, it's possible. However, instead of money, you should invest time and effort then. If you're lazy and broke, that's a problem nobody can fix for you. Was hältst du von alten Uniformen? What do you think about old uniforms? Well, there are a lot of pretty old uniforms, but I don't get the context. I wouldn't wear them in my daily life. But I don't know. Well. How do you deal with the feeling to be the most of the time the best dressed person in the room? To be honest, I wouldn't ever consider myself to be the best dressed man in the room. Because that's a matter of opinion, actually. And um, I try to stay humble, so I don't know this feeling, to be honest. A lot of questions by Valente Velasco. I will just pick one. Thoughts on Boardwalk Empire? It's actually my favorite uh, 1920s show in terms of style because um, compared to, for example, Peaky Blinders, uh, it's much more diversi diversified. You see a lot more different styles in this show, so go and watch Boardwalk Empire. Gehst du auf die Bohem Sauvage oder andere ähnliche Feiern? Do you go to Bohem Sauvage or similar events? Yes, I do go to Bohem Sauvage in Cologne from time to time because I live in Cologne. Um, when there are other, other events, I consider going there, um, but it's, uh, well, it's a matter of, um, of time. I just want to hear your opinion on corduroy jackets. Um, great stuff. I owned a corduroy suit, even a three piece, until a few months ago. Um, I gave it away to my good friend Matthias uh, Feinheraus on Instagram who is sporting it uh, since then uh, because it didn't fit me perfectly as I, um, I would like to. But in general, corduroy is, uh, corduroy is a, a great fabric. Show us your cufflink collection. Well, um, I, will, I won't show you the, the whole collection, but uh, I own these for example. And there is another pair I really like to wear a lot, which is this one. Yeah, and that's it on cufflinks. How to combine double-breasted suit with coat and do we need to unbutton its jacket when we sit? Um, I don't know where the problem is with combining double-breasted suits and jackets. Um, just do it. Just do it. Um, and do we need to unbutton its jacket when, it, when we sit? Well, that depends on the... Well, you, you don't have to unbutton a double-breasted jacket when you sit. You can do it, but that depends on the jacket. If, it's, uh, if it has a lot of fabric in the front, you shouldn't do it, because opening it means that there is a lot of excess fabric f flopping around, uh, and you don't want that. I, for example, have a, a three-piece suit with a double-breasted jacket, which is cut very slim, because it's a 1920 cut. And for this jacket, for example, it doesn't matter. And so I really like to wear it uh, open from time to time, even when I stand up. What's your favorite color of a suit? Well, um, dark brown. Uh, I'd say I'm generally a sucker for brown. Um, it's not the most versatile color, but you asked me for my favorite color. And again, it's, it's really dark brown because I like I liked uh, to see myself in dark brown. If you had to keep one shoe from your collection, which one would it be? It would be this one. My dark brown Allen Edmonds Park Avenue. 
Um, it's quite versatile. I'm not that into black shoes, so I'd uh, go for brown, but again, that's a matter of opinion. I'd, I'd say, ab wann wird Kleidung zum Kostüm? At which point is clothing becoming a costume? Well, that's, uh, that's a good question. Um, I'd say there are two aspects to this. The first one is yourself. When you feel costumey um, or when you're not comfortable with what you're wearing, you will probably look costumey. Uh, and the second thing is context. So if you're the only one wearing a suit or even uh, like a frock or frock coat or whatever, um, to an event where everybody else is wearing t-shirt and jeans, you will probably look costumey in this context. So I'd always recommend adjusting to the occasion, at least a bit. You shouldn't um, like betray your style, but try to adjust to the occasion and uh, the other people around there. Three questions from a very loyal subscriber, Kunoslav Kovacic. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I already answered uh, the first question a moment ago, so I go with the other two. Do you get judged by people on the street or in the workplace for your style? Well, here in Cologne, uh, which has a long tradition with carnival, people dressing up, um, people here, well, they don't look at you and judge you for what you're wearing, really. Um, last year I went to Berlin and this was a bit different but the reactions ranged from like people stopping and telling me that they love my outfit um, to people looking at me with this look like um, you're an arrogant asshole, get out of here. But to be honest I got a lot more positive reactions. So that's fine and at work um, I haven't got one negative word uh, concerning my style, to be honest. So, um, my colleagues like how I dress, I'd say. Or they are too uh, afraid to tell me that they don't like it. I don't know. How to save up for your first bespoke suit? How did you do it? Well, that's uh, another great question. I'd say you have to change your mindset. Well, um, difficult word, mindset, um, used uh, quite often nowadays. Um, what I mean with this is when you're like investing in quality fabrics, quality suits, um, quality shoes, you will experience that you might uh, have to put more money on the table at first, but in the long run it's a lot cheaper than buying new shoes for example every two years. And with the money you're saving um, you still need to wait uh, some time, but after a couple of years, I'd say you will, will, will have saved enough money to buy your first bespoke suit. Um, where do you find those meetings and who is allowed to come, like that one in Florence? Well, that one in Florence was Pity Uomo, and there's nothing like Pity Uomo I, I know of. Um, Pity is a, a menswear exhibition and it's quite difficult to get on the exhibition area when you don't have a journalistic or business interest in the fair. Um, and there are, of course, other menswear fairs like um, in Milan or London, but again, uh, nothing, I, I don't know of any events that are similar to Pity Womo. Would you say that a plaston, a escort, etc. runs with an authentic 20s outfit? If so, with which one and could you show us some examples? An escort outfit is not specifically 1920s, but of course people wore escort outfits in the 1920s because escort derived its name from the Royal Escort, which is a, a horse race at the Ascot racetrack in England. So if you're interested in well 1920s escort attires just look for photos from uh, the Royal Escort event during the 1920s. There are a lot of photos, I guess there's even a video from 1920 on YouTube of the Royal Escort event. So yeah, well, just look for it. Great stuff. Do you have a healthy pocket watch collection? 
I don't know if, uh, if it's healthy. I do have a couple, but most of the times, to be honest, I am ending up with this one here. <clears throat> it's not the most precious, to be honest, but uh, it belonged to my girlfriend's father and I like it a lot. So there you go. I have some vintage ties whose fabrics is great, but they are far too wide and long. Could they be modified as shorter and narrower ties or as a self-tie bow tie? Well, of course they can. Um, it's not that simple, but it can be done for sure. Uh, but what I would recommend to you is uh, don't modify white ties. White ties are great. And if they are a bit too long for you, um, then just um, like tie them so the uh, the wide end is perfectly sized going to your like um, to the beginning of your trousers and the narrow part just stuff it in there in your trousers so nobody can see do it really Warum machst du deine Videos nicht auf Deutsch? Dann würde ich sie auch schauen. Why don't you make your videos in German? Then I would watch them. <laughs> well, I can reach a lot more people with English and uh, video editing is a lot of work so I really like to go for the biggest effect when I'm putting work into it. I also already have a Facebook page and a proper blog that are in German so yeah, the videos are in English. What should I wear to my year 12 formal? Tuxedo or suit? Honestly, I'm from Germany. I don't even know what what a year 12 formal is, so sorry, but I don't know. Last question for today. How did the Great War affect man's fashion in the early 1920s? Great question again. Well, the textile industry um, during the World War was supposed to like produce fabrics for uniforms. You had those huge warehouses full of fabrics that are quite robust, like flannels and so on. Um, great for uniforms, for um, like soldier garments and uh, these were actually used uh, in the first couple of years for tailoring because there was nothing else and it took a while for um, manufacturers to get back on track with uh, like the fine fabrics and so on. Um, what people also did was like retailoring what they had or what they inherited from their fathers and grandfathers. Thank you for all of your questions. Uh, that's it for today and thank you for your interest in my channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Um, let's make it not six, but 60,000 subscribers. Uh, that would be nice. Well, someday at least in a couple of years, I don't know. Um, yeah, thanks again. Comment on uh, what I should talk about next. Um, you can even like uh, comment any, any more questions. I will try to answer them uh, in another video or maybe directly in the comment section. Um, leave me a like and see you soon.